Hello everyone! Today we've got a mystery to solve. We're going to be attempting to figure out who is Penny's father. Which is going to be quite a challenge because that means believing that at some point some man or beast was brave enough to impregnate Pam. Now what we know so far, what we have to work with, is that Pam and Penny both live in this trailer. They don't live a particularly privileged life. Pam is a terrifying, raging alcoholic, and Penny is a bit of a bookish nerd who often spends her time with the children. Is that because she never had a father in the picture herself? The easiest way to know for sure is to just straight up ask her. Unfortunately, we can't really choose what we say to people in this game, but hi Penny, nice to meet you. If you dig in the dirt, you can find some interesting things. This is it, already a huge clue. She's trying to tell us that her father was murdered by Pam and buried somewhere near the trailer. By the way, that really does say a lot about Penny considering that's the first time I've ever met her on this file. She doesn't say hi, nice to meet you. She warns you about the stuff that's buried in the dirt. Now, before Pam gets her job back, she likes to spend her days shoplifting at the Joja Mart. Jody here, being a good citizen, actually pays for things. And Pam is quicker than she looks for a gorilla. Excuse me, sir, were you going to pay for those things? Each day is just the same as the last. A little bit of shoplifting followed by a little bit of drinking. If only I'd been born rich. There'd just be less shoplifting and more drinking. Well, good to meet you, Pam. It's probably a fair assumption to make at this point that Penny's father doesn't have a lot of money, otherwise they probably wouldn't be living in a trailer right now. Also, I'd have to think he'd be quite the alcoholic himself because... Pam. That's some Mayor Lewis levels of depravity right there. Right, well let's try some more dialogue from Penny and Pam to get some clues as to the whereabouts of Penny's father. Fun fact, Pam never really sleeps. She just sits upright all night in her drunken haze until the light makes her blood warm enough to move again. Good morning, beautiful. Make sure your boots are clean before you go stomping around in my house. Yeah, I wouldn't want to get any dirt on the garbage. It's annoying to clean the mess. You should know that by now. Is that why you never clean yourself up? I'm gonna go see your daughter. She's a lot more enjoyable. She's on the move. Good morning, Penny. Who's your father? This is such a small town. You can't avoid meeting everyone. Interesting. More clues. I mean, me personally, I've met everyone in town a few times. I wonder what it's like to live in a city where your father is? Now, Penny also likes big juicy melons, which might also be a trait that she took on from her father. Also, her hair color is probably pretty important. She is a ginger after all, and Pam is a blonde. Not sure if that's natural, but she is a blonde. Wait a sec. I think Sebastian's stalking Penny again. I'll uh, head him off. That'll save Penny's neck a good bite. What? I didn't hear you. I'm busy thinking about something. Yeah, sinking your fangs into poor Penny. Not just yet. I need her for this video. As a compromise, I'll offer you two innocent children. Take them instead. Leave Penny alone for at least this year. Well, let's start moving them up the heart meter. The dialogue gets a little more interesting and personal the closer they get to 10 hearts. A beautiful rainy day. Penny, give me something. Hello. Um... The weather's interesting today, don't you think? It's a lot more interesting than you are. It is raining after all. Sorry. She offered very little there in the way of clues. Pam, are you friends with Gus? He's a pretty good guy. Gus just became our prime suspect. He even gives me free beer on my birthday. All right, my theory has evolved into Penny was conceived on Pam's birthday. One night at the saloon. A really great way to gather information about people is to look through their houses, in particular their personal bedrooms. Marcy in the Underground Castle, that's not helpful. The Salarian Chronicles, that's a game they play with Sebastian. Book, Teacher's Guidebook, Second Grade, that's one of Pam's books. And a book on fairies, Junimos, and other fables. Well, those are actually real things in this game. Not a lot of interesting clues there. The house in general doesn't seem to offer very much. Today's the day we get a two heart event, and these can tell you a lot about a character. Here we have George who's struggling to get the mail. How am I going to reach that letter in the back? You could ask an adult to do it for you. Interestingly enough, Gus is in the scene. Wonder if he has anything to say down there. I might have to investigate that. Penny moves in, looking very alarmed, runs over to George. Here, let me help you, Mr. Wheels. And she shoves him out of the way. Well executed, Penny. The river's a little bit further along. There you go. Who's a good toddler? He's very disgruntled about this. Hmm, I could have done it myself, and I can certainly move around on my own. Yeah, but we can also wheel you around pretty easily. How feeble do you think I am? Well, you weren't just yelling at the mailbox, so we're starting to worry about you. Woody, you were watching us? I was. You did a kind thing there, Penny. Considering if it was me, I would have wheeled him down past Willie's shop and straight into the ocean. Thank you. I just wish George wasn't so upset. I was only trying to help. You know he can hear you, right? At least I think he can. Sigh. No, no, I'm sorry, miss. I shouldn't have gotten so angry. He got so mad that all his hair fell out. It was actually very kind of you to help me out. If you'll excuse me for a sec, I just need to work my way over here. And Gus has nothing to say. That's okay, Mr. Mulner, I understand. So we gather from this that Penny is actually a sweetheart, which makes her a perfect wife for me. 
It must be difficult to grow old. I'd rather not think about it, and I don't have to considering no one ever actually ages in this game. Not sure what Wheels did wrong, but he did something. I guess you're right. Why stress about something you can't change? We can't change who your father is, so you should just let me know. Well, it was interesting talking to you, Woody. I should go. Gus is on the move bright and early. What are you doing out of the saloon? Yeah, I know a lot about the people living here. Perfect. That's the benefits of being a bartender. Sometimes I hear too much. Go on. He doesn't really have the right hair color, but you never know. Penny hit me with that two-heart dialogue. Did you want something? Yeah, I want to know who your father is, who the brave soul was that mounted Pam. I mean, aside from me that one time, but that was weird. Arr, my head. Yeah, you should probably just amputate it. Four hearts today. So far, we've gotten actually absolutely nothing regarding the father of Penny. A lot of the other characters will share some details about past events, family, all that kind of stuff. These two have given me nothing so far, but I'm not giving up yet. Like I said, the farther in you get with the hearts, the more they're willing to tell you. And in a game with this depth and so many details involved, there's gotta be some kind of mention of it. Everyone else who has missing family members allude to them at some point. Penny? We're very lucky to have a library in such a small town. Yep. When you're lost in a book, it's easy to forget the realities of your life. She has a point there. She's probably got the worst life of everyone at all, living in a small trailer with the Pam. Let's dive into the foreheart to get as many clues as we can. Wow, someone had a party last night. Why is your clothes all over the floor? Ugh, oh, it's so dirty in here. Not half as dirty as it was last night. Why are there stains on the ceiling? Good morning, Penny. I'm just dropping in to see the mess. Okay, so either something got crazy or someone got murdered last night, and knowing Pam, it was probably both. Woody, um, so sorry that it's such a mess. I was about to clean up. I don't judge. I realize who you live with. You'll help me? You really mean it? I really don't, but for the sake of getting this investigation done, I'll play ball. Okay, you can get started over there. I'll clean the kitchen. Can we just, like, tow your home to a dumpster? Alright, don't mind me. Just taking up this garbage from someone else. Not sure who was over last night, Penny. Maybe they're your father. Or they're about to be your stepfather. Pam could be her own stepfather. What do you think you're doing? Cleaning up after Hurricane Pam blew through last night? Stop it. I had everything just the way I like it. Yeah, trophies from her victims strewn all over the trailer. Mom, the house is a total mess. Woody and I were just trying to tidy things up a bit. I mean, when your couch starts leaking green slime, it's probably time to clean things up a little bit. Were you at the saloon just now? You smell like beer. Well, it is 9am, so... She's probably just leaving, actually. It's none of your damn business where I go. Well, it kind of is. She does need a mother at some point in her life. It is my business. I don't want you destroying yourself. I kind of do. She's probably the only one that could defeat herself. Don't you realize your choices have an effect on me? Stop being so selfish. Yeah, Pam. And she's shaking with anger. Selfish? I put a roof over your head and clothes on your back and you call me selfish? You ungrateful little. Honestly, Pam, you can accomplish both. You're still a selfish moron, that's for sure. Uh, yeah, by the way, I'm just here. You better go. I'm sorry you had to see this, kid. I'm sorry I had to see you, ogre. Well, bye, Penny. That was awkward. He's a nice young man. All right, well, that just kind of demonstrated the dynamic between Penny and Pam. Did not give us any clues as to the father, but we can get some forehead dialogue while we're here. You know, I've been thinking. I wish I had a hobby. Something to do other than hanging around at that saloon every night. Have you tried, like, I don't know, anything at all? Because that's not really a hobby. You got any ideas? Volcano Splunking. Alright, well I know you're currently really mad at me, but if I give you this bouquet of flowers, you don't really have a choice. You're dating me now. By the way, I'm dating your daughter now. Maybe if you do real well on your farm, it'll boost the locale economy. Then everyone will have a job and we'll all be happy, right? Well, I doubt you will be, Pam, but everyone else might be. And by the way, I'm not single-handedly rescuing this economy. I've lived in Pelican Town my whole life. Can you believe that? Yes, that actually explains quite a lot. I guess there's a lot out there I'll never experience. That's his spirit. Reach for the stars. Both Penny and Pam are at 10 hearts today. Let's see if they give us any clues. They've given us absolutely nothing to work with yet. I'm really disappointed about that. I wish I could keep a garden, but a yard is such a mess. Again, these are all things that are fixable. You guys just complain about how things are bad. Instead of complaining, use that energy to actually fix things. Maybe I'll live in a place where I can have a garden someday. If by garden you mean tending my crops, absolutely. Come on over. Maybe I'll live on a farm. Giggle. Yeah, maybe. Pam? Penny's being weird again. I always seem to end up at the saloon at some point. You always seem to start at the saloon, Pam. It's too close to my house. It ain't healthy. Yeah, blame it on the saloon. Blame it on the geographic location. 
Blame everyone but yourself. I was thinking I would get engaged to Penny today, but I want to get a little bit of our Ten Heart dialogue before we're engaged. I need some clues. I mean, today, we could just stalk her. I'm pretty sure she's just going to the library, but I like stalking people anyway, so let's just kind of give this a go. Are you by chance looking up your family history? My mother used to drive the bus to Calico Desert, but the bus stopped working a few years ago. Mary says there's not enough money in the town coffers or else he'd have it fixed. I think we should instead have Pam fixed. But hey, that's cool. By the way, one of the little morons is here to see you, so I'm out of here. Okay, idiots, I need one of you to give me some shred of information. Don't mind that old dog next to the house. I'm more worried about the one inside. He might look at you, Cross, but he'll never get up in that box in a hundred years. Projecting much? The old boy's name? It's Dusty. Also an accurate description of yourself. Alright, Penny, I'm coming in. Need information. Hello, um, the mountains look nice today, don't they? Yes, yes they do. Well, since she's playing hard to get, let's get married. Blah blah blah, three days. Penny is all moved in, and we have no new clues about her father. Good morning, current and about fourth favorite wife overall. I have to go into town today. Don't work too hard and eat something good for lunch. I, uh, yeah, whatever. By the way, if you mouse over the icon to the right of their portrait, it'll actually tell you what their heart level is. I always forget about this, but this would actually be really helpful for a lot of the things that I do. For example, she's at 13 out of the 12 hearts, which is why she gave me a star dub yesterday. You'd either better have breakfast or information. I have to go into town today. Don't work too hard. Okay, that was our dialogue from two days ago. We're already repeating. Fantastic. And what do you have for me now? I always wanted my very own library. This is so charming. I like to do a little reading first thing in the morning. It gets my brain into gear. Was I shy when we first met? It's funny to think about. Now that we've come so far, you still don't really say much. Well, since both Pam and Penny both yielded absolutely no clues whatsoever, I don't know what to make of this. I'm quickly running out of time because these things take a lot of time to do. One interesting fact that I did come across, however, was that if you and your spouse want to have a kid, we know it takes 14 days, exactly two weeks for that kid to arrive. We know that Gus gives Pam free beer on her birthday, so that would be the perfect time for having a kid. Albeit not intentional. So whose birthday do we have exactly two weeks after Pam's birthday? Does that mean that Gus got Pam so drunk on her birthday that she had a child two weeks later named Jazz, who was basically adopted by Marnie? Somewhat plausible, pretty interesting, but pretty unlikely. So I'm going to go with Mary Lewis was so drunk one night after the saloon, he mistook Pam's trailer for his own home. I mean, they're not far apart, it's very possible it could have happened. And once you enter the realm of Pam, you don't really have a lot of choices as to what goes on after that. Anyways, seeing as this investigation yielded me basically zero results, maybe someone out there knows something about this. Is there some dialogue I didn't find? Is there some clues somewhere in the game that I missed? Please let me know in the comments below and I can do a follow-up or something. Hope you liked it. Thanks for watching.